Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Healthcare Personnel Safety Training com Session Component for the Influenza Vaccination Summary of the Healthcare Personnel Vaccination Module. Long-term care facilities can enter their healthcare personnel influenza vaccination summary data by using this module. My name is Elizabeth Kalil, and I work as a contractor in the Immunization Services Division at the CDC. I'll be presenting information during the session. So this presentation will cover three core objectives. The first objective is to provide an overview of the healthcare personnel safety training component. We'll then review how long-term care facilities can use NHSN to report the healthcare personnel data and next, we will briefly go over how long-term care facilities can get started in the component and how they can begin reporting their data. So now we'll go over some of the basic elements of the healthcare personal safety component. So you may be wondering how NHSN is organized. NHSN is divided into five components. Patient safety, healthcare personnel safety, biovigilance, long-term care facility, and outpatient dialysis. Each component can have multiple modules. This presentation is focusing on the healthcare personal safety component, and this consists of two modules, the healthcare personnel vaccination module and the healthcare personnel exposure module. We will discuss the healthcare personnel vaccination module during this presentation. As shown on the previous flowchart, there are two modules within the healthcare personal safety component. The healthcare personnel exposure module and the healthcare personnel vaccination module. Facilities can report the healthcare personnel influenza vaccination summary data using the vaccination module. Staff members in healthcare facilities can use the influenza vaccination summary data to monitor influenza vaccination percentages among healthcare personnel. The summary level reporting replaces individual level reporting of vaccination status of healthcare personnel, which was previously available through NHSN. So now we'll talk about the specific reporting requirements for the module. So there are several benefits to tracking and reporting healthcare personnel influenza vaccination summary data. Long-term care facilities can use the healthcare personnel vaccination module within NHSN to enter their healthcare personnel influenza vaccination summary data. It's designed to ensure that healthcare personnel influenza vaccination reported coverage is both consistent over time within a single healthcare facility, but also comparable across facilities. Using NHSN reporting requirements to monitor influenza vaccination among healthcare personnel may also result in increased influenza vaccination uptake among healthcare personnel because improvements in tracking and reporting healthcare personnel influenza vaccination status may allow healthcare institutions to better identify and target unvaccinated healthcare personnel. Increased influenza vaccination coverage among healthcare personnel is expected to result in reduced, reduced morbidity and mortality related to the influenza virus infection.
So to be included in the data reporting, healthcare personnel must be physically present in the facility for at least one working day during the reporting period, which is October 1st through March 31st. Facilities should collect data on three types of healthcare personnel, which is what we call the denominator in NHSN. One category of healthcare personnel consists of employees. They are staff who are paid directly by the facility payroll. The other two categories consist of non-employees. One non-employee category is licensed independent practitioners. Only non-employee physicians, advanced practice nurses, and physician assistants are included in this category. The other non-employee category consists of adult student, students, trainees, and volunteers who are aged 18 and older. Facilities should also collect data on the influenza vaccination status of healthcare personnel, which is what we call the numerator. This includes healthcare personnel who received an influenza vaccination from the time when the influenza vaccine became available for that particular influenza season, and this could be as early as August or September, through March 31st of the following year. The first category includes healthcare personnel receiving influenza vaccination. This could be influenza vaccination received at the long-term care facility, or the vaccine could be received outside the healthcare facility, such as a local pharmacy. If received outside the healthcare facility, the healthcare worker must provide a written documentation for this. The other numerator categories include medical contraindications, declinations, and unknown vaccination status. These categories are mutually exclusive. The Healthcare Personnel Influenza Vaccination Summary Protocol provides guidance for a facility to collect and report influenza vaccination summary data for the healthcare personnel vaccination module. It includes comprehensive information about reporting requirements and specifications, such as the numerator and denominator categories, methodology, data analysis, and key terms. Each long-term care facility should thoroughly review the protocol before collecting and entering data into NHSN. The next slides provide an overview on how to get started in the healthcare personnel vaccination module and the healthcare personnel safety component. For facilities to participate in the healthcare personnel safety component, they must enroll in NHSN and activate the component. Enrollment in NHSN is required for facilities that are currently not participating in NHSN but wish to participate. Please follow the link on the slide for more information on enrollment. During the enrollment process, facilities may choose to participate in any of the NHSN components that were noted earlier in the presentation. Please note that the only component in NHSN necessary for reporting healthcare personnel in funds of vaccination is the healthcare personnel safety component. If a facility is already enrolled in NHSN, 
and wishes to participate in the component, the facility must complete the one-time healthcare personal safety component activation process within NHSN. If your facility is not enrolled in NHSN, you must designate an individual to be your NHSN facility administrator and then complete the five-step enrollment process. If your facility is already enrolled in NHSN, you will need to get in contact with your facility administrator to ask him or her to activate your component. Next, the facility administrator will add users. If you are unsure of your facility status within NHSN, please email nhsn at cdc.gov for more information. Long-term care facilities that are new to this reporting must complete the five-step enrollment process. We will not be reviewing the enrollment process in this presentation, but we have included this information in other presentations that are currently posted on the NHSN website. Please note that the process of enrolling a new facility can take a minimum of four to six weeks. Details about the NHSN enrollment process can be found using the link on the slide. Once a long-term care facility has enrolled in NHSN, only the facility administrator can activate their component. To activate the component, the facility administrator logs into SAMS, which stands for Secure Access Management Services, and provides secure online access to CDC applications, such as NHSN. Next, click on NHSN Reporting from the SAMS login page. From the home page, the facility administrator will select Add or Edit Component under the Facility tab. Next, the facility administrator will check the Healthcare Personnel Safety Component box. The facility administrator can then add the name, phone number, email, and address for their primary contact for the healthcare personnel safety component so that he or she can be reached if C CDC or NHSN has any updates or questions about the facility data. The facility administrator can then add their primary contact as a user within the NHSN facility. To do so, the facility administrator should click Users on the navigation bar and then click Add. Next, the facility administrator should complete the mandatory fields for the Add User screen, which consists of the user ID, first name, last name, and email address. It is important to keep the contact information for both the facility administrator and the primary contact updated, especially when there is staff turnover, so that the correct individuals can be reached during this time if CDC or NHSN has updates. Other users can be added by the facility administrator or the new healthcare personnel safety component primary contact. The facility administrator should also make sure that at least one healthcare personal safety component user has administrative rights, and in general, this should be the healthcare personnel safety component primary contact. Users with administrative rights will be able to add additional healthcare personal safety component users.
As previously stated, NHSN recommends that there be at least two people with access to your facility at all times. Any current user with administrative rights, which includes your facility administrator, can add a new user to your facility. To add an additional user to your facility, please click on Users and then Add on the left-hand navigation bar. On the Add User screen, complete all fields that are marked with an asterisk. The user ID can be any combination of letters and numbers. So for example, the user's first initial and last name or the user's internal employee number. Next, please enter the user's first name, last name, phone number, and email address. Then click on Save. The Edit User Rights screen will appear after you save the new user information. You will need to select the appropriate level of rights to give to a new user. This step must be completed for new users to have access to any of the system features within the component. To combat NHSN access issues due to staff turnover, vacation, or extended leave, we recommend that each facility has at least two individuals who can at least add, edit, delete, or analyze data. If you're unsure about the level of rights to assign to a new user, please contact the NHSN Help Desk for assistance. Once the new user information has been saved, that user will receive an automated Welcome to NHSN email with the instructions to begin the process of becoming an NHSN user. After agreeing to the NHSN rules of behavior, the new user will receive an automated email to register with SAMS. All NHSN users are required to complete the same SAMS identity verification process prior to gaining access to NHSN. After registering with SAMS, the new user receives instructions to create a SAMS account and also complete an identity verification process. During this process, Please be sure to follow the instructions carefully to prevent any delay in processing your documentation. You will receive confirmation from SAMS once the documents are approved, and a SAMS grid card will be delivered to your home address. You will then be able to access your NHS and facility using your SAMS credentials. Long-term care facilities should also log into NHSN at least once per year to keep their SAMS grid card active. More information about the SAMS process can be found using the link that's listed on this slide. After a facility has enrolled in NHSN and activated the healthcare personnel safety component, the facility must complete two required forms. This is the Healthcare Personnel Safety Monthly Reporting Plan form and the Healthcare Personnel Influenza Vaccination Summary form. Please note that the Healthcare Personnel Safety Monthly Reporting Plan form must be completed before a facility can enter any data for the influenza vaccination summary. 
There is one optional form, which is called the Seasonal Survey on Influenza Vaccination Programs. Facilities are encouraged to complete the short survey, as the information will be very helpful for CDC. The survey aims to gather information on influenza vaccination programs for healthcare personnel by collecting data on the types of personnel groups that are included in the facility's annual influenza vaccination campaign, the methods a facility is using to deliver influenza vaccine to its healthcare personnel, as well as strategies that a facility uses to promote or enhance healthcare personnel influenza vaccination. This slide shows an image of the healthcare personnel influenza vaccination summary form. So the next few slides will go over some resources that may be helpful for long-term care facilities when reporting influenza vaccination summary data. Facilities can visit the NHSN website using the link on the slide. The website contains links to the protocol, data collection forms, frequently asked questions, comprehensive training slides, and recorded trainings for healthcare personnel in Funza vaccination summary reporting. If you have any questions about NHSN, please send an email to user support at nhsn at cdc.gov. You should also include HPS flu summary in the subject line of your email and specify that you are a long-term care facility. So this concludes our, the slide presentation, and now we'll have the opportunity to take questions from those who are in the room as well as those listening online. We do have a question from one of our web streamers. And the question is, do we include contract nurses as part of the denominators? Um, that's a good question that we receive frequently. And contract personnel are not required to be reported at this time. Um, but there is a field in the uh, data entry screen. So you may report on the contracted nurses if you would like. If you include vaccinations received in August or September, whenever you have them available, mm -hmm. you would have to include those individuals in your denominator, correct? Um, so, for example, if they received the vaccine in August, and then they worked for at least one day from the October 1st through March 31st period, then you would include them. But let's say, for example, if someone received vaccination in August, but then they quit in September, then you would not include them in your data. In either your numerator or denominator. That's correct. Okay. Okay, well, I think I don't see any more questions, so thank you very much. <laughs>